Hey guys, it's the Art of the Kickstart, episode number 24. Welcome to the Art of the Kickstart.com, where entrepreneurs are constantly pushing the envelope to build businesses of greatness. Inventors are innovating and creating the products of the future, and backers stand strong for what they believe. These are some of the great thinkers, inventors, and leaders of our time. Here are their stories. Guys, one of the biggest challenges I've been hearing from project creators, guests, and just people emailing in is being ready for their Kickstarter campaign, ready, having marketing, everything set so that they're just ready to dominate Kickstarter when they launch. So that's what I did. I decided to create something real simple checklist for you guys to look over 23 steps to make sure your campaign is ready to dominate. So if you guys go to artofthekickstart.com slash checklist, you guys can get that absolutely for free. Hopefully, it'll help you make your campaign a massive success. Hey, guys. Welcome to Art of the Kickstart. Today, I'm extremely excited to have Reggie Senegal, athlete, entrepreneur, and pretty creative guy on the line today to share his story, building a pretty amazing product to tie your shoes. Thanks so much for coming today, Reggie. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having us. So I like to kick off these interviews with something to get people pumped up, something you live by. Do you have a success quote, something that others can learn from? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's actually two things. I mean, obviously my, my life is, uh, uh, certainly about mainly my family, but, uh, when it comes to whether it's, um, performing out on the course or, 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 or whatever, or, or building a product or whatever, that, that saying always goes with me as I have it in my little business card pouch here. And there goes it. Even if your efforts for years seem to be producing no results, one day a light that is in exact proportion to them will flood your soul. That's awesome. I love that quote. I'm totally, I'm totally gonna want to follow that. And I want to jump now into a little bit more about you. Your life as an inventor and an athlete. But I think to really understand where you're coming from with this, you've got a great fitness company. You were a uh, pretty competitive athlete. Can you take us back and give us a little background story? Well, I grew up in the South. Um, it, it wasn't exactly the easiest start, uh, if you will. And, you know, uh, once I found my stride, literally, in uh, in the number of sports that I went through, it was obvious that it was track and field. And so I really, really bared down and focused in, in terms of getting better at that and putting time and stuff, and it really paid off. So, you know, I got a slew of scholarship offers, went through the um, you know, whole recruiting process and stuff, and you know, the rest, as they say, uh, is, is history where that goes. Um, ran a bit after college. You know, I've seen some pretty remarkable things and was introduced to some pretty remarkable athletes beyond, even beyond my own capabilities and stuff, and it has just been an incredible journey. And from there, you know, once I decided I wanted to, it was time to get a real job in terms of, you know, supporting myself and whatnot. The obvious for me was a entrepreneurial endeavor, which was uh, personal training initially. And uh, I had been doing that. And then, you know, I've always tinkered with things and the way my programs and whatnot were designed just, uh, just were unorthodox and different. And so... That's what kind of brought me here regarding, you know, just certainly the whole inventive entrepreneurial side of things. Tried a number of things in terms of ventures and, you know, they just didn't pan out for one reason or another, or a million of them. But, um, you know, just never quit. That's simply it. <laughs> never quit. Never quit. Uh, continue. Yes, absolutely. And you really did that. That's that's one of the reasons I really wanted to get you on here. As an athlete, someone who has to really compete at the highest level, it is just driving yourself motivation day in and day out. You ran a sub four minute mile, which is amazing for anyone who doesn't realize. And there's so much effort that goes into that. And a lot of that's applicable to business. The same kind of stubborn pigheadedness it takes to make yourself better, to improve your business, to do it day in and day out. What are some lessons you learned from your career as an athlete that you've taken into your role as an inventor and an entrepreneur? Oh, I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, there's, there's, there's not too many that I cannot really think of in terms of they all applied in terms of 
the will to win or to succeed at something is basically it. You know, and, and the farther you get up the, the ladder and our rung of, it doesn't matter whether it's sports or business, the more difficult things are in terms of really producing, you know, whether it's a, a time or a product or any number of things, an outcome uh, to, to, to be specific, it, it, it becomes more and more difficult. So all of those things have served me certainly in um, any of the endeavors and stuff that I've had in certainly in business up to this point. And a lot of what you've done up to this point has been in the fitness industry. You were an athlete, you were a personal trainer, and now you're creating fitness-based product. That's one of the most cutthroat fields in the world. Everyone wants to be in fitness. There's so much money to be made. How do you stand out from all the other competitors? I think in terms of standing out, you can't just try to copy what other people have done. Or, or I mean, you, you, I think what, what sets me apart is that there's these, what I call these tiny windows that occasionally open themselves to me. And I feel like I have a great intuitive understanding of just movement, some basic geometry and physics that goes into movement. But I know also I feel like I understand people very well and and my assessment of them upon just seeing them, seeing them move. It it sort of comes natural for me personally in terms of uh, I've been told before that I have like a perfect running form. I think what kind of helps to confirm that, too, is 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 the fact that I've never been hurt in my in my career in terms of injuries that I know that have nagged and plagued a lot of athletes. And I attribute it to that intuitive aspects of adjusting and, and tinkering slightly to not find myself in that position. I've been reading the book Mastery by Robert Greene lately, and it reminds me of your story. Great book. It is an amazing book. And you guys can get that free. I'll tell you about it later. But really, the whole philosophy is to find your purpose, your mission, what you're innately built to do. And it seems like that's what you're doing. You're a fitness guy. You're great with biomechanics. This is what you do. And you're building a business around this. How do people find that for themselves? Sometimes it's challenging. Your passion doesn't seem like it can be a business. Do you have any advice? First and foremost, you have to believe in yourself. No one else which you'll continuously find no matter what effort you attempt at it, will do it for you. And I think you have to understand that. And it it just, some people, uh, unfortunately, that is just not within them. And and others, it it is for whatever the reason, it's in them. But that's not to say that anybody can't do something with, that, that isn't willing to put the work into it. And, and make good decisions around the work that they're, they're, they're putting in. I don't think super long hours necessarily equates to success. And I think that that's something that our culture is enamored with. Uh, you know, be the first to leave, be the first, the last to leave kind of thing. It's just, it's working smart. It's knowing when to, you know, if something's got you, just walk away. Let it marinate. I think, and that's the intuitive part, I think, that I just allow to happen. How do you, how do you allow something to happen? It's just, it's so hard when you want something so badly. How do you focus yourself on other aspects to just wait and allow something to happen versus trying to force it and failing? For me, as, as an inventor, I have so many things that I'm working on while there's sort of a, a stride, if you will, that you hit with something. Maybe it's a breakthrough. A breakthrough is probably a better uh, definition or a term for it because you know when you're on to something. It, it, it just feels right, but then you hit a wall. Well, that's where the, the overwork and overthinking comes in. I think it takes practice in terms of it's just like the athlete. It's the same thing with an athlete who thinks that 
hey, if I take too many days off, I'm going to lose something. When in actuality, it's going to make you better because your body has enough time to heal and 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 do what it, it needs to do instead of you continuously grinding away and wasting energy and, and, and strength and putting yourself in a position for possible injury. Uh, it, it's no different with the creative process in terms of when that wall presents itself. For me, I have other products. I gently back away and move on to those other products. And sometimes the product or idea that I move to, it's not happening that day. So I go to another one. Some, sometimes it's just not happening. So I step back. I just simply step back and um, it, it always presents itself. Your mind is always working, especially I think if you're of, I guess, my disposition, if you will. It haunts you, so to speak. And so there's other distractions, a good book, my family, a good bike ride or a swim or a run. You... Don't control it. It is control. And I think once you give in to that, once you give in to that process, I think things are, are more likely to come out closest to what you imagined. That's really well said. I want to jump now into the reason we got you on here. You're an amazing inventor. But let's talk about your product now. Let's talk about Snap Laces, the Kickstarter campaign you guys are running. Take us through the idea. Where did it come from? Well, for me, it originated from um, I when I first got into to, to doing triathlons. You know, there's a huge learning curve when you're when you're dealing with three three sports. It's basically three sports that make up one. So there's this huge learning curve. Prior to triathlons, I didn't know how to swim. So I went to the pool and I got some lessons, but I essentially went to the pool and kept going until I taught myself how to swim. And then I, I continued to go. And so uh, with the learning curve, you just, you know, again, you have to really want something. And you really wanted it. You've got, you've got a great fitness business. You've got an awesome Kickstarter campaign you're working on now. What challenges are you having with getting snap laces to people, to getting it out there, marketing it, what can people learn? You know, when you have something new, it's as simple as the product is, and it's built around convenience, style, comfort, these sort of things. But it doesn't matter the degree of difficulty or simplicity when it's something new into the stream of consciousness of the public the challenge is education and awareness initially. Those are the biggest hurdles. And I think that ultimately, if you really feel like you have something, which I think certainly the people around you are the ones that really, they're the ones that really come forward and let you know, I think, the magnitude of what you have. When you do that, you put it out to people. When is it ready? This is always something entrepreneurs struggle with. When do you put that product out there and let people critique it? When do you bear it all? <laughs> um, you know, um, I struggle with that just like anyone else because uh, that's where the OCD and perfectionism and everything comes in. But again, there's a point where you have to put it down and – I think I remember reading this by, uh, from a guy by the name of Guy Kawasaki in The Art of the Start. He says, you know, you just, whether your product is complete or not, you need to get it out there. You need to start. And that's the most important thing because you can, oh, you can, you can spend an R&D. You can, you can keep, oh, it ain't, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. Uh, and you can over simplify something as well. You can over-engineer something. And I think also to, um, you know, in having a good team around you and people who have uh, good minds and who are able to can lean on, so to speak, and can take things out of your hands and, okay, you know what? We need to do this. We need to do that. You need to go over here. <laughs> 
sort of in that sense, you know. Uh, you can be your own, I know from an in- inventive standpoint, you can be your own worst enemy regarding that process. How do you deal with that as a manager? A lot of inventors, they just like to build something and then just get rid of it. How do you keep the process flowing, actually build a business out of your ideas? I think you have to be brutally honest with yourself. You have to be brutally honest in the sense of what you are, uh, as I said before, the people around you, which eventually will be your customers, they let you know in a sense, if, whether or not you have something that's worthy of, of them spending money on it. If it's like you're told over and over, wow, this is, this is a great product. I, I think you have something. And, it, it, and through the process, you continue to iterate on the, pro, the, pro, the product itself and trying to get it as and, – and testing. You, you, you can't be afraid to – Get your feelings hurt, so to speak. If someone should respond because maybe they don't know the uh, what the product does, or you can guarantee that that's going to happen. But it's got to drive and push through and uh, develop a thick skin, and you know, never quit. <laughs> never quit. Spoken like a true athlete and inventor. I love it. I want to jump in the lunch round now. So good, Reggie. Yes. Welcome to the Launch Round, where we take our guests through a series of rapid-fire questions geared towards unlocking the inner inventor and entrepreneur in all of us. Get ready to blast off and unlock your inner potential. Let's do this. Okay, Reggie, first question. As an inventor, how do you find issues to solve? They're everywhere. I see them all the time, and it's just listening and paying attention and uh, usually, I would have to say it's something that that irritates me first. I have to have some sort of experience with it. For example, I'll go back to the the snap laces themselves. I know earlier you asked me how I came about and all this stuff came about with the snap laces. My first triathlon was like, okay, well, I'm in transition two, and this is the first experience I've had with putting on shoes with laces and at the time I had a pair of Adidas and I mean these laces were like they had to be 62 inches and so I'm cinching and trying to tuck this in here and it's like that was the start of something Um, you know I was really irritated by it moving into other triathlons and so that's what sparked the, the fire if you will in terms of leading me into creating a better solution for myself. And next question, Reggie. You're an inventor, an athlete, a dad, and a businessman. What is the most challenging or physically painful experience you have ever had, and how did you overcome it? Oh, gosh. Um, I, don't know that, I don't know that I see loss. I'm definitely disappointed If I've lost a race that I've really worked hard to prepare for and things just didn't go the way that I felt they should have gone, I've always, always learned something from that. And 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 it's, it's always just been difficult for me to not take that away. And I think what where that comes from is my rough beginning. You 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 didn't. You didn't waste time or you didn't have the luxury of, of, of contemplating things in terms of you had to make quick decisions sort of as a kid. And I think that that was just – it just was established within me at an early age. And so I, I, I don't dwell on things too long. I, I, I think immediately about, okay, what went wrong here? What's next? How can I fix this or how can I make this better? And I think a lot of that shows within the products and stuff that uh, I design in terms of the ideas I may come up with. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received from a mentor or coach? Entrepreneurship or athletics? Just take it how you like. However simple it may seem, 
And I try to keep it that way as much as possible, especially where life is concerned. Those words were never, ever, ever give up. Keep trying. That's something we all we all fight for, and it is definitely a way of life, I believe. If you could meet any athlete, anyone in the world, past or present, who would it be, and what would you talk to them about? Oh, God, this is, this, <laughs> there's, there's a number of those, but I, I guess it probably would be Sebastian Coe. I, I know during my, my running career, he was someone that I, 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 I very much admired. He was a middle distance, a British middle distance runner. He held the world record in the 800 meters for 20 plus years. Uh, and it was only not too long ago, recently broken. So it, his, 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 his work ethics, his, obviously his mental thoughts around, you know, how he approached races and uh, prepared for them. I mean, of course, someone of his magnitude, you can get those things in terms of uh, books and publications and stuff now, but you know, coming from him, it's different. It's just more real. And we talked about books a bit before and just recently. What have been three books that have really influenced you in your life? First thing that comes to mind is it's not necessarily a book, but it is a series of works by Ralph Waldo Emerson. One of them is one of the series is in the book um, is uh, Self-Reliance. I loved his philosophy and I loved the courage that he displayed back during an era where expressing that kind of courage openly could, could have meant your life. And he was a, a was an individual, obviously a, 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 a very well educated, very smart individual, but he was, he was an individual that was with all of that stature, he was easy to admit when he was wrong about something and much quicker to exert himself in the sense of correcting it. I really admired that about him, especially during a a period of time where certain things weren't exactly popular to the masses. I like that. We hadn't had Emerson referenced yet, but I think he's a great author and people can definitely learn a lot from him. And... Actually, guys, if you go to artofthekickstart.com slash audible, you can get a free audiobook, whatever you want. It's a good thing to listen to on a run, at the gym, whatever. But anyways, last question of the launch round, Reggie. So this is what I'm going to ask you, and it's going to be weird, but you got to go there. So decades <laughs> and decades down the line, when you eventually die of old age and all everything, what do you want people to say about you? What will they say Reggie Senegal's life was about? What I hope people would would say is that he was someone that always followed through with what he said he was going to do and that he lived his life and didn't shriek from any challenges or or he he lived his dreams. That's pretty much all we can ask. Just live a life of adventure and awesomeness. And I think you're definitely on on the road to that. Now let's jump back into snap laces. We've we've done enough introspection. We've invaded your life enough. So this is going to be the last question of the interview. You've been awesome, Reggie. I love your story. I love what you guys are doing. If you had one piece of advice for inventors based off of what you've learned, for people, they just want to change the world, create something amazing. What would you tell them? Well, listen, just simply listen and never... If you don't feel right about something, don't move forward. When your head, your heart, and your, I guess, gut lines up, always move forward in that capacity. But it still all be, all comes back to never giving up on yourself. There will be a lot of hurdles, a lot. It will be extremely challenging. And always know that when you don't think someone's looking, someone's always looking. And it just goes back to that um, that that quote that I um, stated earlier. You know, it it has everything to do with that. Even if your efforts for years seem to be producing no results, 
one day a light that is in, a, in the exact proportion to them will flood your soul. And your results are really starting to hit, Reggie. I love what you're doing with the crowdfunding campaign, with the business. I want to give you a chance now. You've been awesome. You've come on. You've answered my questions, done this, that, and the other to help inventors. Help yourself. Share your story. Where can people find you? Why should they check out Snap Laces? And thank you for being awesome. Well, you're welcome. And I I really appreciate you taking the time out to do the interview with us and stuff, or me. But, you know, obviously we're running a Kickstarter campaign, uh, snaplaces.com. You can go there and, and there's a link to our crowdfunding campaign. You know, should get you, you know, directly to the campaign. And please, please support us and we thank you very much and look forward to, you know, delivering a, a fantastic product. Guys, there's so much rubbish out there. This is actually a great product. If you're too young to tie your shoes or you're an athlete and just don't want to have to deal with it, check out Snap Laces. They've got an awesome product. Reggie just shared an amazing story. And from what I can tell, he's a pretty cool guy. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. It's been a blast. Thanks, Reggie. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Art of the Kickstart, where we believe makers, inventors, and entrepreneurs are changing the world and bringing humanity forward into the future. I'm your host, Matt Ward, and it's been a pleasure guiding you through this journey of creation and innovation. I hope you're inspired by this, and check out artofthekickstart.com to get more information and tactics to help you launch your own business, product, and dreams. 